Hello everyone and welcome to EduSurge Clinics where we discuss some key topics related to common medical and surgical practice. I am sure a lot of you have seen this graph. This is a thromboelastography graph or a tech graph. However, it is a bit tricky to understand this graph. So what we are going to do is simplify the different parts of this graph and show you where it is utilized, how the test is done and then look at the therapeutic implications of the report of a TAG. So we have to understand that TAG is a global coagulation, thrombosis and fibrinolysis assessment test. Okay, this is a very important line that it assesses the blood coagulation, then the thrombosis and then the fibrinolysis. So all three parts can be assessed by TAG and that is why it is a very important test. It can help identify abnormalities that can lead to excessive bleeding on one hand, that is the hemorrhagic tendencies in a patient, to excessive clotting in a patient. Some important useful scenarios where we have used TAG, we do liver transplants and liver surgeries. Also manage patients on anticoagulation or patients with coagulation and bleeding disorders. So these are some of the important surgical and critical care settings where TAG is important and utilized routinely these days. Okay, If you have an in-house uh, TAG testing, you can get the report in around one hour. In very simplified terms, TAG measures the torque on a pin. Okay, So this is a graphical representation of the TAG device. The cup that is shown in this figure will hold the blood of the patient. The pin will rotate when the cup is oscillated okay so what we do is the container has a substance that triggers clotting so when the patient's blood is put in the container clotting is initiated the torque on the pin increases okay as the clotting or viscoelasticity of the blood in increases right so once the clot forms the pin or probe that is suspended in the blood sample is moved back and forth and the resistance to this movement is measured, okay? The results are recorded on a graph where we see some important steps such as time it takes for the clot to begin forming, the strength of the clot and the time it takes for the clot to break down. So basically, we are looking at the coagulation pathway, the thrombus formation pathway and the fibrinolysis pathway, right? So this is the tech graph. I'm sure a lot of you have seen it. There are some important markings, so let us see them one by one. The distance between A and B, that is the point where the blood is put in the cup to the point where it starts showing changes in the viscoelasticity is the R or the reaction time. We will see the details of these times in just a few moments, just understanding the labeling of the graph first, right? The point between B and C, that is where the K time is there or the kinetics time or the clotting time. The two red lines form the angle which is known as the alpha angle. Then you have the maximum amplitude of clotting which is shown by this red bar. Okay, MA or at the point D is the maximum amplitude of clotting. And then the clot starts to lyse, that is the fibrinolysis period starts at this point. We measure clot lysis index at 30 minutes, that is at point E. Okay, So A to B is the reaction time or the R time. The normal range is between 5 and 10 minutes. Okay, This is also known as the activation phase and it is basically the time that the blood is placed in container to the beginning of clot formation, okay? This activation phase basically relies on the clotting factors. So the R time or the reaction time, normal range is 5 to 10 minutes, also known as the activation phase and is dependent on the clotting factors. The next or the green, dark green bar is K time, that is BC between B and C, that is the amplification phase. And this phase depends on normal platelet function. It is time taken for clot to reach a certain level of strength. Now, this certain level of strength is 20 mm amplitude. Okay. So, kinetics, as the word suggests, is a measure of speed. Right. So, K time 
the standard normal is one to three minutes and it is a measure of speed of clot formation and this k time depends on platelets okay so understand r time depends on clotting factors k time depends on platelets okay the next is the alpha angle this phase is known as propagation phase and the alpha angle is the angle formed by a tangent to the curve and the axis at the point where the clot reaches 20 mm amplitude okay so at the point where the k time has started and ended that is the 20 mm amplitude so at this point a tangent to the curve and its intersection as shown by the red lines this is the alpha angle okay and the normal alpha angle is 50 to 70 degrees and this is known as propagation phase okay it is basically a measure of the rate of fibrin accumulation and cross-linking so we started with a coagulation related phase that is activation phase then platelets helped in the amplification phase and now the propagation phase where it is a measure of rate of fibrin accumulation and cross-linking higher alpha angle indicates faster and stronger clot formation right then we have the red bar or the ma at d point that is the maximum amplitude maximum amplitude depends on the platelet and fibrinogen and it measures the maximum strength of the clot which is roughly 55 to 75 mm okay as the normal standard value the last part or the green light green horizontal area between d and e is the fibrinolysis phase okay and we measure clot lysis index at 30 minutes what that means is the percentage reduction in the clot strength amplitude or basically the clot breakdown what is this amplitude? The pin starts moving better as the clot starts to break down and the viscoelasticity reduces, right? So, at 30 minutes from MA, what is the lysis percentage as compared to D is what is measured as clot lysis index and the standard normal range is 0 to 8 percent, right? So, this is one of the most important slides as you can understand the entire curve its basis okay how the test is conducted the different phases and the relevance of the various parts of the coagulation system to those phases you can see everything in this one slide so going ahead we need to interpret these measures right so if you have a prolonged r time now you know r time is based on clotting factors so you can have a clotting factor deficiency or the patient may be on ongoing anticoagulation both of this can affect the R time. On the other hand, we know that K time or the kinetics depend on platelet and fibrinogen. So platelet dysfunction or low fibrinogen level, you will have prolonged K time. Low ME, the maximum amplitude again depends on platelet and fibrinogen predominantly. So platelet dysfunction, platelet blockers or thrombocytopenia or fibrinogen deficiency, you will have a normal r time but a prolonged k time and low ma right so this picture can be seen in diseases where you have platelet dysfunction or fibrinogen deficiency right continuously decreasing ma that is and maximum amplitude as you do this test two three times you will see that the ma keeps on decreasing this is again a marker of ongoing fibrinolysis right a high clot lysis index what that means is that the clot lysis is say around 30 40 percent at 30 minutes then there is an increased risk of bleeding in that patient because the clot is lysing very rapidly now one very important condition where tech can help identify the stages is the dic right because in dic there are different stages and the coagulability changes in both stages so in stage one there is hypercoagulability with secondary fibrinolysis. So now we know that coagulability will affect the R time and the K time. So the decreased R time and decreased K time with increased maximum altitude will suggest that the clot strength is very high and it is forming very rapidly in this phase. And there is continuously decreasing maximum amplitude which suggests ongoing fibrinolysis so hypercoagulability decrease r time and k time and increase ma and alpha angle 
with secondary fibrinolysis pointed by decreasing MA is suggestive of stage 1 of DIC. Whereas on stage 2, which is a hypocoagulable phase or where there is an increased risk of bleeding, the R and K times are prolonged and the MA is very low. So this is the hypocoagulable phase or stage 2 of DIC. So this is how you can use the tech test to have various interpretations and understand the various disease processes that are happening. How to put this into therapy? When you have an increased R time, you know that there is an issues with the clotting factor or ongoing anticoagulation. This is the point where you can use FFP. Decreased alpha angle or increased K time Okay, is a fibrinogen problem. You can use cryoprecipitate. Decreased maximum altitude is basically a place where platelets may help or desmopressin may help. And if there is increased fibrinolysis or high CLI, that increased risk of bleeding, tranexamic acid may help, right? Remember that you may have to serially do this test every two hours or every one hour to understand what is happening, especially in conditions like DIC. Now, there are a lot of graphs that are available for easy visual recognition. So there's something like this A, Okay, hemorrhagic and thrombotic variants and the fibrinolysis where you can have primary fibrinolysis and secondary fibrinolysis. So if you want a visual understanding of the graphs and a visual memory, then these are the graphs that are available. Okay, the low clotting factor function, the low platelet, low fibrinogen, the shapes of the graphs are different. But if you understand the tag as a test, you understand the various standard normal values or you see the standard normal values for your lab and you see and compare all the points of the tag graph based on the values, I'm sure that you will be able to identify the problem that your patient has, which part of the pathway is the problem. Is it the coagulation, the thrombosis or the fibrinolysis? And based on that, you can monitor your treatment. Thank you.